The survival rate of patients who are intubated in the COVID epidemic is only 20 to 40 percent. Ventilators can further damage the lungs of COVID patients and they are in very short supply. This has led doctors to try to treat first with nasal oxygen and second with CPAP for as long as possible to try to avoid intubation. CPAP has been shown to be good for hypoxemic respiratory failure. It recruits and splints alveoli in a similar manner to PEEP. But face masks used for CPAP allow air to escape, potentially pumping an aerosolized virus into the surroundings that may infect other patients, other caregivers, or anybody nearby. Hi, let's stop for a second and let me introduce myself. My name is Larry Guessman. I'm a physician and electrical engineer, and I'm also a sleep apnea patient and have CPAP at home, which I sleep with every night. Note the small holes between my eyes and the mask that leak air. The air leak can be seen in this video. The purpose of this video is to show you how to modify CPAP machines so that they can be safely used to treat coronavirus patients in the hospital, perhaps even at home. After all, if I got even a mild case of coronavirus, I would still have to use the CPAP for my sleep apnea, and I would not want to infect my wife or others in the house. This slide shows viral particles in the expired air when a patient is wearing or not wearing a mask. When attached to droplets, coronavirus droplet combinations are greater than 5 micron. When aerosolized, they're less than 5 micron. You can see in the slide that both droplets and aerosolized particles can be effectively blocked by a medical mask. The problem is that the CPAP machines that leak air leak unfiltered air. So our goal will be to redirect the expired air through a filter before releasing it into the environment. So step one is to block all the air holes. In this slide I did it with tape because I didn't want to ruin my mask, but if I was to do this permanently I'd probably use a silicon-based glue to plug the holes. Or substitute the CPAP face mask with this face mask from an Ambu bag that has no holes but which will need headgear. Next we have to create a circuit which allows air to come in on the corrugated hose from the CPAP machine, ventilate the patient with expired air going through valves and out of filter. The one-way respiratory valves provide some resistance to airflow but also prevent backflow. I use two valves in this circuit to provide more resistance. The expired air is then passed through a viral filter before being allowed to enter the general environment. Expired air is now diverted through the valves through the filter and out to the environment. Notice when I inhale the pressure goes to 11, when I exhale to 8 centimeters of water. This is normal function for my machine, which has CPAP flex. It functions sort of as a BiPAP, with higher pressures for inspiration, in my case 11, and lower pressures for expiration, in my case it is set to 8. Note that without providing valves in the expiration circuit to increase airway resistance, the CPAP machine would assume that the mask was off. Finally, the circuit was completed by using an Ispira inline bacterial filter, which may or may not be workable for viruses. This slide shows the relative efficacy of high efficiency filters, HEPA filters, and ULPA filters. This slide shows a funnel covered by an N95 mask to substitute for the inline viral filter. HEPA material could also be cut from a Hometics or other HVAC filter 
and placed over the cone, which raises the issue of obtaining parts. In this COVID emergency, everyone around the world is competing for respiratory parts and filter material. I have found that breast pump valves can substitute for respiratory valves. And three quarter inch corrugated plastic hosing can substitute for 22 millimeter official ventilator hosing. Thank you for watching this video on how to modify CPAP machines to be safely used in treating coronavirus patients. I use the word safely because it probably eliminates viral spread in the air to some degree, but this is a demonstration prototype only that still needs safety and efficacy testing. Thank you for watching.